What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Big Thing. It's Wednesday, and the crew's different today, as you saw in the thumbnail, and it's a great crew. It's a great crew. It's like got Collider Live vibes uh, in, in a way, but that shouldn't be a bad thing. That should be a good thing. <laughs> so Roxy Stryer is here, and I got my buddy Matt Sarah on the show today, and we're going to talk about a lot of things. And the, one, the main thing I really wanted to get Matt on was to talk about Dune, but then all this other shit started dropping, man. We got, uh, we got the Acolyte trailer, and we're going to talk about the Acolyte in general. We're going to see whether or not we think that they can actually stick the landing. Does this tone work, or is it going to be another um, Star Wars show disappointment? Uh, then we are also going to be talking about Mad Max Furiosa, man. That was a prequel that a lot of people were excited about, and then the trailer dropped for the last one, and I loved the last trailer, and then this one seems to be more on everybody's uh, radar to really starting to look like an anticipated film. There's other stuff, man. There's, there's Rebel Moon has another thing coming out, and there's, there's more things coming. We'll talk DC. We'll talk Marvel. We'll talk about it all. So do me a favor, hit that button. We're trying to get to 200,000 subscribers, and we're going to get there because you guys are part of the conversation, and you're doing it each and every week. We're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Spotify, we're on all that stuff. Uh, if you are interested in the UAP phenomenon, make sure you check out my new channel, the UAP News Channel, which is Down to Earth with Christian Harloff. We are approaching 15,000 subscribers right now, so we're trying to get to 20 by the end of the month there. All right, let's do it. It's myself. It is Roxy Stryer. It's Matt Sarah. Here we go. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Big Thing Show. It's myself, Roxy Stryer. And joining us, he is the former UFC welterweight champion of the world. He is Matt the Terror Sarah. What's up, Matt? How you doing, man? going on christian hello roxy what's up gang it's really hello, hello. it's great to have you both on the show and i was hello. as as i was saying uh before it was i had like those old school when you used to call in a collider live matt back in the day that feels like it was how long ago was that now six, it feels like five, yeah five six years six ago six years ago probably yeah, 2000, 2018 2019 so um, nobody yeah. else thought it was gonna be a bad thing you're like oh not that that's a bad thing you're the only one christian who refers to that era as a bad era show sucked um so <laughs> either way so yeah and i was talking about the other thing i was gonna intro is uh, up top we were talking about it off air and i said that um as we bring it in, Matt, and obviously his accomplishments that he's done in his illustrious career, plus he's hosting UFC Unfiltered with Jim Norton, um, he's potentially going to be my uh, my sensei. Did I tell you that? You didn't. I'd, I also have clarification questions. What? Yeah, Matt. Matt is a Matt teaches at, at school jiu jitsu, and and he's been telling me he's like, I'll, I'll train you when I get here, and I'm like, dude. A legit question? I, yeah, I'm gonna. Here, there you go. Look. Yeah, there dude, you go. I, have, I, I got wearing it. Wearing my Sarah BJJ Academy uh, jersey. I, I've That's been, right, man. There's a rumor going around that yeah. you might want to uh, address, Christian. I don't know. It's not mine to say. Yeah, the rumor. Know? I mean, I've been talking about it on the live show, kind of throwing it out there. But the it's it's getting more and more um, real that I'll be moving back to New York. That's Earth 52, Christian. That's not this Christian. This is That's just another That's one. No, it's this one. That's this one. But one of those things, and Matt and I have been talking about it, Matt, and Matt will be close enough that he can come in the studio and we can do shows. With, it'll be like the reverse. Is that you, where you're going? Just to be with Matt yeah. there. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Yeah. Um, Roxy, I don't want you to get all peanut butter and jelly, but you're looking at his new BFF. No. Listen. That's I'm, what you're looking at. Peanut butter, I'm jelly, sorry. and fluff right now. I don't believe it for a second. I'm I can't. Not, you, no one can replace the gold that is me. I mean, you're pretty But close, you're not going to be replaced. But, it's just going to be the opposite. Except Matt and I are going to be sitting in studio, and you'll be on the screen like, like Matt is You right know now. I have the worst FOMO of anybody on the planet. I'm I moving know. to New York. You should. Um, <laughs> I but can't but be I, here. I, When I told Matt, though, Matt was like, yeah, you come to my academy, and I I said, the one thing you got to realize is that I am a not in shape, and but you're getting in sick shape. I'm I'm losing weight, but I'm not I'm not. That's in the first step. And he said he said something that really stuck with me, and he said all that means is you don't have any bad habits. There huh. you go. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. You but, understand? You know I'm going to be a disaster, I mean, you right? You could be like, yo, I've been practicing breaking boards on the weekend, watching Cobra Kai. I'll say, Christian, forget all that shit. Forget waxing the fence. You are going to start with a white belt on and you in the beginning you're not going to be strangling anybody no you will be but you will not be getting strangled i will not throw you to the wolves all right i'll take care of you all right okay? i believe you but i'm going to be a disaster you know that 
It's gonna be fun. All right, fine. It's gonna be fun. I can't fine. picture it. I can't either. But 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 I trust Matt. Yeah, me hey, too. Yeah. In the era of of you know comedians getting smacked, you better have something. Up, you know, <laughs> you're right. Up. You're right. I should for sure. But look, hey, look. If Jake <laughs> if Jake Paul could fight Mike Tyson. Then I guess I can at then least what, train. I, I can then at least what? train. I can at least train. Um, what do you feel about that fight? You think you think Tyson's got a shot? Do I think Tyson has a shot? I mean, not Tyson has a shot. Jake Paul has a shot at beating Tyson. Uh, well, I mean, listen, you got to kind of round up. Tyson's going to be, you know, in a few years, he'll be sixty. Right. I mean, age is definitely a thing. Yeah. So, you know, the longer it goes, you know, the younger guys got that endurance. Is um, it's another weapon to have in the arsenal. So, but at the same time, it's freaking Mike Tyson. So he's gonna take it easy on him, right? There's no way. He's no, gonna, I don't. I you don't, don't think, think so. so. I think he. I think he did decapitate him. He will. You know. Yeah, because so it, you know it's exciting, but it's kind of like if you're Jake Paul, you might be a smart business guy, but you're like, I don't know. Where's the? You're fighting a sixty-year-old. I just don't like. And don't get me wrong. I know it's Mike Tyson. But it's kind of like, I don't know, if it's a, a boxer that's coming up your age, I know it doesn't have the – everything's about spectacle now, right. which is kind of wacky. Right. But, you know, I'm saying that, but, yeah, I'll probably fucking watch it. So. Of course. Well, it's on Netflix. It's on Netflix. Everybody will watch it. <laughs> oh, no yeah. Way. yeah. It's on Netflix. It's not even on Yo. pay-per-view. It's on Netflix. If you have Netflix, everybody Live? Will. Hey. Yeah. Everybody's yeah, well, watch it. Oh, yeah, they're getting into that. And yeah. that's smart. That's yeah. smart to get into because Netflix is in how many, like, countries and this yeah. and that. And if you guys are live, you know. Well, I know that – well, because they asked Dana. They asked Dana. Well, Dana's not in favor of, of Mike fighting at this age, and Dana loves yeah. Mike Tyson. But he's also saying – they asked him because the deal's coming up with UFC, and they asked him if, if Netflix – if he's going to be talking to Netflix. And I love Dana's answer. He's like, we'll be talking to everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. They've done a couple uh, successful live ones they have so far, but do you guys remember when they tried to do the Love is Blind live reunion and Netflix, the entire stream shut down? No, but I'm sure that they it got for it. Two days. I don't know. I, it's a very difficult thing to do. Remember, they say they just bought, they, because UFC and WWE is owned by the same company now, but like they, they, they're gonna. They announced Monday Night Raw is gonna be there too, so they're gonna have to get their live shit together. They thought they had it together, of course. I'm just saying, if something goes down, I think people are gonna be pissed. I'm sure. I'm sure, but I don't. I don't. I think that they. You think they're fine? I think they're okay. gonna put enough money into it, but yeah. But I'm. I'm with you. I just. I think that Tyson has um, the benefit, no matter what, because if Paul beats him, like you said, Matt. You just beat an almost 60-year-old man. But if Tyson winds up not, because they asked Chuck Liddell. I saw they asked Liddell, and they said, um, what do you think? He goes, And he goes, come on. He goes, Tyson, he's like, power's the last thing to go. That's true, right, man? The power's always the last thing to go? Yeah, that 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 is true. And I am personally, I'm friends with Chuck. But have you seen Chuck's last how many fights? Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm no, saying? I know. Buddy? I know. So, listen, man, in this, the game that I used to play, you don't want to stick around too long. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it doesn't look good. You remember Pat Militich? Yeah, of course. You know that name? Of course. He just had a fight. He's probably Tyson's age mm -hmm. or a little younger. It, I just couldn't even watch him in the shorts. It made me uncomfortable. <laughs> it's just, I'm like, Yo, you're a 60-year-old. And, I mean, I just don't. And he ended up losing because he got tired to a guy that he should have just smacked around. Right. I'm just not interested in seeing guys pass their prime go at it. Yeah. But, Again, it's a smart business move because shit, man. You know, Mike Tyson is a different, a different animal altogether. Sure. I mean, look at him. Look at him. Right. I mean, and he's in it's not exactly Mike Tyson from The Hangover. He's not a big fat guy doing. You know, he's he's in fucking shape. He's, man, he's still know? moving. He's still moving. That's and look, Mike Tyson at sixty. You'd have a better chance of training him at your academy than you do me. I'll tell you that. Um, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you you know both funny and dead. well you're funny I'm gonna make you you're funny I'm gonna make you dead. <laughs> well I'm, being funny being funny on the mat's not gonna be the issue. <laughs> no, it's getting rid of the funny. It's gonna be the issue. You're gonna be dangerous. Uh, I watched everything. <laughs> yes. Those trailers. Yeah. Would you let's? What do you want to bring up first? Which one did you? Whatever what, you want to talk about. Not, I mean I know Rebel Moon got a lot of shit um, when it came out, and. I want to. I like. I wouldn't mind talking about that. I just sure. watched the follow-up trailer. I was one of the defenders of Rebel Moon because look, look, you might know what you're getting. It, I, what is it? The Magnificent Seven, Seven Samurai in space. Yeah. You know what the. You know what you're getting. So if that's not your thing, people are like, oh, I feel like I've seen that before, or I, I like, I'm already felt like it by seeing the like the trailer of it. Like, mm -hmm. I get it. 
you get the powerful warriors to protect the village and there was even a mandalorian episode with like that that time right did you like did you did you wind up liking the first one i did yeah i enjoyed rebel moon because i knew what it was and it's basically a setup for the big second half that some of them are going to survive some Mm -hmm. of them aren't i want to see i like the characters i want to see how they're going to get taken out i want to see how heroic that's going to be i felt it was kind of a shame they took out um what's cyborg's name (laughs) oh uh ray Ray fisher Fisher, yeah because he he, that looked like a cool powerful you know heroic dude he went out pretty cool with you know in a in a shot that's you know been done a lot yeah you know that old sacrifice bug ah you seen the same thing in mad max when yeah but anyway uh but you dug it for what it was i got i took it for what it was i enjoyed it but i'm also very interested i just seen some of Zack Snyder on Joe Rogan, yes. Joe Rogan experience. Yeah. And he was no saying yeah. that, you know, he'll play to the PG 13 crowd. He'll give something for everybody. But I believe he said summertime the is going to be his, what he's known he, for, his extended cut, his true vision that's going to be out there. Well, that's what, got, and, but dude, that's what got me is that I wish, I wish they would have put that one out first. You have Netflix, you have this deal, you had the leverage to come in and, you know, basically say, Hey, this is what I want to do first. Put that out first because I can tell, did you, Rox, you didn't see Rebel Moon, the first one, right? Because of exactly what you're talking you're about. You're waiting for the Rated R version. The first thing that happens two days before it comes out is Zack Snyder said, This isn't my cut. Right. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm not doing this again. Right. <laughs> I'm not watching not your cut again. I'm away. Yeah. yeah, which and a, a lot of people did that. And I think that there's a lot of things inside of it that you're like, oh, this might have had a better effect. I would rather seen the rated R version in his version first. So I understand that. Um I think, you know, and I still haven't finished the first one. I watched a lot of it. And it wasn't that I thought it was terrible. It's just like it was, I'm always rooting for sci-fi. And we're going to get into our conversation of Dune in just a second. But, like, I'm always rooting for sci-fi. I was rooting for good sci-fi. And, I'm a, and in you know, people can say what you will. And, oh, but it's just a ripoff of Star Wars. I'm like, Star Wars is a ripoff of Dune. Star Wars is a ripoff of Flash Gordon. You know, like, there's like, so who, so who cares about that? I just, I thought it was just, it was missing stuff. And I thought sometimes it was a little too over-stylized. But I think that Sophia Butella is great. I think she's yeah. really great. So I'm gonna. I'm, I think I'd, I'm gonna go when finish one finish. And I thought Ed Skrein was great as the villain. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. But this new trailer, it, it's you know, even though I, for me and Matt's probably the one who has the most reference on it because he's watched the whole first movie. Um, I I was a little confused on some of it because like oh I probably should watch the end of it to really know what the hell's going on. So um, but it's weird because I was so hyped for the first movie. And after watching, I'm like, I'll get to this and finish wait, it when I want. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Hold on a second. Yeah. You didn't watch the ending of it? No. Shame. I know. Shame on I, you. Yeah, fair. Fair. This, this is your life. I, hey, I'm fucking around. I'm no, no, you can. Listen, absolutely. Hey, my thing is, so I don't. I almost don't feel like giving spoilers now. There's stuff that happens at the end. That's, that's all right. Much. Don't worry about it. You give less of a, how is your show here? Can I drop the S-bomb? Yeah, every, I know it's, tra- it's too late. Go ahead. Do what you, do you got to do. You don't give a shit no. about the Rebel Moon. Well, it's not that. It's not true. I think it's, that's true. It, it's. I think he just said. <laughs> I don't want to give it. I, give a shit isn't fair. I just. It's, it's not. A, it's not a priority. It's not a priority. A fun little. There's like a fun little twist at the end of it where a guy you think. And there's things that how he did it, that got you by surprise. There's certain things in Rebel Moon, where they're God. Listen, they're going to a planet to talk to the guy that knows where the rebels are. Right. And all of a sudden they're going to see the guy. I don't know if you've seen this part. Uh, and also, he gets captured by a bounty hunter, okay. and, he gets, and the bounty hunter yes. captures him in this big, like scorpion type thing, and okay. carries him away. And that, you know, like little things like that. You see the bounty hunter walking around; and he looks like almost like an orc, like just devilish, and he's smiling, taking the guy away. Little scenes like that. I'm like, that's fucking cool. What's that dude's story? That right. bounty hunter. It almost brings you back to the earlier. Star Wars things when you see bounty um the bounty hunters up in that scene you're like yo man what the fuck are they about right right you know I don't know I like that kind of stuff yeah so I'm looking at it for what it was he's trying to world build and it was I don't know I thought everybody was really just giving him a hard time I get it he gets happy you know he likes the slow mo he's a very visual guy yeah and I like it I think it's beautiful I think a lot of the shots are like really are really amazing. So I don't know, man. I took it for what yeah. it's worth. I enjoyed the heck out so of it. So you're excited. You're excited for the second one for sure. Yeah, listen. 
we're not watching Dune and Dune Part Two. You right. know what I'm talking well, about? Well, yeah, but, but there's such a it's difference. Still, it's a fun. It's still a fun ride. Right. What it is. Well, I mean, you going know? back to what you mentioned, you mean you mentioned that Zack Snyder was on Rogan, and they talked about you didn't know yeah. he was on. I had no idea. Yeah. That's a, a wild pairing. I'm to so me. surprised that you didn't know because it, this, there were so many different, especially at DC. Is this week. It was la- two weeks ago. So I probably took quotes from it. Probably was reporting probably. on things he said and had no idea it was Well, there on was this Rogan. whole argument about, he had this whole conversation about um, about Batman. And he was talking about how people really got on him <laughs> for Batman using guns and the fact that Batman couldn't kill. And, and like Corey mentioned it on on my mm-hmm. show on Friday. And everybody was talking about it. Like, yeah. you, did you, because Matt, you're a big comic book guy. Did you have any, uh, you know, uh, well, how about you feel, how'd you feel about his comments? What he said about Batman, those things. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's weird. Cause I, li- and this is what I like about Zack Snyder. And I, and I'll tell you, I, it's so funny. Cause after I seen that, most of that episode, uh, of Zach on the on JRE, I went back and I started watching Watchmen again oh, that's because a, he yeah. did Watchmen. Yeah. I mean, he's very passionate and he, and he's very enthusiastic about his about what he's doing, and that and that's like that's contagious. You yeah. know, I like that. I like that a lot, and I see that in his work when he talks about a character like Batman. He's like, well, when they tell me that Batman, his number one thing is he doesn't kill. That's the first thing I want to do is make him kill. Like, but something along the some, I'm paraphrasing. But that's yeah, much something. Like yeah, it's like, well, dude, why? But why? Like, I understand. And then he starts making an argument. Like, well, look, if somebody's got a gun to the head and you know he's going to shoot the person, and then you have a choice to make, and so it's like, I don't know, man. It's like he's done it for so long without doing it. It's kind of like he's kind of showing that there's a difference between us and like true bad guys right evil. well there's I been like, a debate there's been a big you know, debate about this some people think that oh you know because we posted little shorts of it and some people are on the side of what koi was talking about and some people are on the side of what zach was saying the only thing that i the biggest thing that what i had koi say koi was saying that the whole essence of batman is, is that the, he doesn't that, that he doesn't kill because he his parents were killed by guns mm-hmm. and the whole point was that but yeah go ahead oh, i i hear koi because he's also a purist of course you know this is his jam and i'm a big batman girl as well but what i do think is that if we're going to give creators the ability to use these characters we have to give them the ability to like use an these world characters thing. not only is it an else world thing but you know we've created this expression in our society like my batman you right. know that's not my batman and it's like it's none of your fucking batman you know batman's for the world to share right. that's the joy and of that's having this particular these- take. And that's his take on it. So it's like you can say I don't like that take, but to say he shouldn't do that take is kind of well, ridiculous. That's true. Yeah, that's his take. But, but yeah, go ahead. It's, you know, no, I, I, I agree mostly what you're saying. But there's some people like let's think about a character. See, with me, I always thought Batman was cool, but like I, he was never like when you say your guy, like when I mean my guy, like let's talk about Wolverine for a second. Yeah. I first of all, Hugh Jackman's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. When that first X Men. They, he talked about the way Brian Singer shot it, and they made him actually seem shorter than everybody. And then you see in an interview, he goes, but eventually they just done away with that. Me? Now, look, you might be like, well, you're kind of partial to this because you're 5'6". Maybe I am, but give us someone to look up to. You know? <laughs> so my point is this. As a guy that loved the character right. growing up, yeah. uh, I, it, the Wolverine, what was he? What is he? Wolverine, who is in the comic, up to my chin. He's 5'3". That's the whole point. You know, Wolverine's a short, ferocious animal. Not the tall, leading man, like, fucking right. walking around like he's Clint Eastwood. I'm thinking I should think well, somebody more. But here's, but here's but, the thing. This, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, for sure. Well, that was one I of the... I don't know, man. I love you, Jackman. Yeah. And he does a great job with... He, he's not 6'2". He's just not. Right. So well, I mean, like, they're going to change. I think they'll change up Wolverine you know, for the next one for sure. And I think that's why Daniel Radcliffe has been, like, uh, rumored for. And who's te- that? Uh, Harry, short? Harry to, Potter. That's Harry Potter. And Who yeah, he is Harry small. Potter's going to be talking about being Wolverine? So there's a rumor that he's already. Oh, cast. Fuck, be doing some push-ups. I know. Well, there's a rumor that he has been. He was it, naked on Broadway. So. That's true. He was. He got his magic wand hanging out. So I um, went and saw. Did you? Yeah, I went to Equus. I got my ass there. Is he see. hung like a bull? I was far away, and you know oh, I'm blind. Okay. 
Just couldn't tell. Mm-hmm. Um, so, well, anyway, so so they um, they uh, said that he might be in Deadpool and Wolverine, this one that's coming out, because there's going to be different variants of Wolverine. So the big rumor is that he's going to be in it and then would transfer over into the MCU as Wolverine, or wow. maybe Taron Egerton will. That's the other one that they're talking about. So um, We've been hearing his name for years. A lot, a lot. And yeah. I, that's my choice. I think Taron Egerton would be the best, but he's like he's like 5'10". Five, but, um, yeah, it's still... Like I said, camera angles. Look what they did with, with Hugh Jackman in the first yeah. X Men. They and you know then again, it's funny because Hugh Jackman's like ah. Then they just did away with that. But I am still interested in watching. You know, I'll t- you know, uh, Wolverine, Deadpool, and Wolverine. That should be fun. Yeah, I think you know? so too. And uh, the other thing I was going to say with the Zack Snyder stuff, the only thing that I said that I was like, well, wait a minute. Well, that's not true. He said he was. You were talking about um, Christian Bale and or or rather why he loved Ben Affleck as Batman, besides the obvious reason that he cast him. Yeah. <laughs> but the reason why he loved it is he said that Ben's a big guy. Ben's like 6'4", and he's this. And I go, Ben Affleck is not 6'4". And by the way, Ben Affleck, and, and just to prove that, I was at a screening. Uh, I went to see um, Kung Fu Panda, and I took my little one with me. And we went to the movie theater, and I looked over, and at the, just like a normal dude buying a popcorn all by himself was Ben Affleck, right? And I... And I seeing Kung Fu Panda. He wasn't seeing Kung Fu. I don't know what he was seeing, but he by was by himself. He was I, well, maybe maybe J Lo was there, maybe somebody else was there. At but the he movies? was he was upstairs getting himself popcorn. And then he went down the escalator to do his thing. But he was just doing his thing. I stood very close to him. I'm a little over six feet. He was maybe six one in the heavy on the higher side, pushing on six two. No more than that. And he's not 6'4". Six 6'4 four. Six four is Henry Cavill, right? 6'4 is... Uh, to me, there is legitimately zero difference between 6'2 yeah. and 6'4. Oh, no. that's not, uh, When you that, are 5'2", everybody who's that's, over I mean, six I feet is a giant. I understand <laughs> that. I understand that. But, but, but six, I mean, look, in, in the fight game, 6'2 six t- six to 6'4 six is a big difference. Oh, shit, yeah, man. Hey, dude, listen. When I got the title, I was up the same PS nipples. Yeah. I hear you. I understand about fucking reach. Yeah. And how to close the distance. But, uh, yeah... Uh, what the fuck are we talking about? I was just talking. I was just talking about the fact that they chose that. The fact that uh, you know the sometimes when you think you have this vision of someone, you say, "Well, but he needs yeah. to be this big imposing guy," as opposed to like hey. Christian Bale. Christian Bale's fa- like um, is like six feet, so he's only like you know an inch over, whatever it might be from. Yeah, but he was yoked. Like yes. the way that well, that's he looked the difference. The, I think he just had. He's probably just talking about his presence. That's that's a different conversation, but. All right, now before we move on, we're going to talk about Dune because we've all seen Dune. We've all seen Dune oh. too. And we're going to get into that. Before we do, I want to tell you guys both about our good friends over at AG1 and Factor. Here you go. All right, guys, let's talk about AG1. You guys know I love AG1. If you've been listening to my show, you've heard me talk about them, and I've been drinking them for about two years now, and I love it. Never been a vitamins guy. I've told you that. I take it all one shot, AG1. I put it in a water bottle, I shake it up, I'm good to go. I recommend AG1 to my friends. I recommend AG1 to my family, everybody. AG1 is a team of doctors and scientists. It is tested for 950 contaminants and NSF certified for sport. It is formulated based on the latest science and maintains high quality standards. You guys know they've been with us for a while because you guys know too. You've all been checking them out and everybody who's been signing up to AG1 says the same thing. It's changed your energy. It's changed how you approach things in a day. You're smiling more, you're running around the place and you're sleeping better. I know. AG1 is the supplement that I trust to provide the support my body needs daily. And that's why they've been a partner for so long. If you wanna take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and you get a free one year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash big thing. Drinkag1.com slash big thing. Check it out. Excited to talk to you guys about Factor, man. You know, it's not always easy to eat better, but it is with Factor. Because they have delicious, ready-to-eat meals. It's every one of them. is It's fresh. It's never frozen. It is chef-crafted. It's dietitian approved And it's ready to go. This is the best part. Two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from each week, whether it's Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, all of it. And there are more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day. What are you waiting for? Two-minute meals. And there's a lot of great stuff. Pancakes, smoothies. 
There's no prep. There's no mess meals. It's flexible for your schedule. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast premium options with no cooking required. You just sign up and you save. You head to factormeals.com slash bigthing50, but you got to use that code, bigthing50. And what happens when you use bigthing50? You get 50% off. That's bigthing50 at factormeals.com slash bigthing50, and you get 50% off. All right, thank you to our friends over at AG1 and Factor. And as I mentioned, every week, if you're able to, you have the means to, and you want to support the show, which I get comments all the time to support this show, support yourself. Get something like AG1 and Factor. They're both amazing. You're going to love them. The link's in the description, always the pinned comment. Okay, so, Matt, I even wanted to talk about this one, man. We've been, we've been uh, after, after I, were, I called um, three people when I got out of the theater for Dune. And I know, Roxy, no, you're not one of them because you didn't get see the invite, me. didn't get to anything. That's true. But I called Mark Riley, I called Mark Ellis, and I called Matt Sarah. And Matt, Matt's, Matt's, you were, where were you? And you were in Florida or something when I called you. Yeah, I was. I, I believe it was on a vacation with the yeah. family. And I, I called, and I called, and the first thing he goes, the first thing, because he knew, he goes, are you calling me about Dune? <laughs> and I go, I am. Talk to me. Um, was I, was I right about the movie or what? Listen, let me tell you, nerdgasm all over the place. Yeah. I don't care if you believe. I believe. I'm sorry. That's a line from the movie. <laughs> yes, it is. I loved it. Yeah. I fucking loved it. Let me tell you how I seen this thing. I had one of my fighters having his first pro debut in, uh, in Atlantic City at the Tropicana. Yeah. So this kid, young Marcus... He, he's, he's a stud. He had his first fight there. So me and my family, my whole family trains at my school, my wife, my three daughters, and my brother-in-law, right, Edwin. He's a Dune nerd. He loves his shit. And he's a big 300-pound ex-fighter, too, so it's funny. So, look, we took the trek from Long Island to, uh, to AC, a few hours uh, drive. At the Tropicana, there's an IMAX theater. Oh, that's great. Lo and behold. So, and when I, we went to see it on the Friday that it came out, Dude, there was nobody in there. But uh, AC, first of all, Atlantic City. You've been to Atlantic City, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the it's the opposite of Vegas. Right. It's kind of like Vegas, but it's in a shithole. So <laughs> it's like it's horrible over there. Yeah. And the theater, there was nobody in there but a few people. So we watched right in the center right. of an IMAX theater. I could not ask for a better experience. That's pretty great. Yeah, especially when there's not a lot of people there. This right? movie was sold out. All across the country. Right. You, on, a, on the Friday it came out, you saw it in an IMAX randomly. You just walked in. Atlantic in. City. In a, well, you got to think about the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You You're know, not going to AC you know for I mean? Dune too. Yeah, the crowd, for sure. It's like, you know, it's like the Walking Dead. They're just <laughs> doing slot machines and fucking. <laughs> and Atlantic City, they're all, it's a mess. So this is not like your typical AMC theater. You right. know what I mean? Right. Uh, in, in like a strip mall. It was in a casino. And I had a feeling. And it was the first showing. It was like a 12:30 showing, and uh, I'll tell you what an experience. Because, because the music alone, you know, it, it just it, it just gets you going. Yep. The, it, visually, it was beautiful, but I like that it starts right where the last one. Yes. Uh, you know, ended, and it was just I, man. It was. Just, I, I. What did you think? Uh, How'd you like? It? I mean, so I loved it. I thought it. People and I keep hearing people say, "Well, I like the first one better than the second one, or I like the second one better than the first one." I can't say either, because people have to ask me, "What do you like better, the first one or the second one?" It's one long movie. Like, yeah. you can but say, when you, you can see say, one long movie, Christian, you can't say whether you like the first half that, or the well, second that's half. That's what better. I was going to say. Now, if you're asking if I like the first half better than the second half, that's a different. That's like that's right. Like when you, you liked went, the second half better, which is why you liked the second movie better. Eh, it's semantics, not, but it's no because it's not semantics. Yeah. Because oh when God. you're filming it for one, you're filming this in the same way that you filmed like Back to the Future two and three. You filmed it all at the same time. So you can't basically. say whether you like Back to the Future two or three better. No, 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 no. I'm just saying the way that they filmed it is they're filming it all in <laughs> one. In that wasn't filmed as like. <sighs> It's it's harder to say because that this is based off a book. This is one book. They sh the difference is they shot those stories. The but same thing with Mockingjay or whatever the Hunger. Mockingjay Part One and Part Two is one long movie. Harry Potter. But you can say end. which one you like better. Not out of those out of those two. Because I think it's, it's one very movie. legitimate for people to have a preference. I have fun. 
I and do. I think you guys could agree to disagree. That's right. Well, That's one right. of the, here's the problem with that, Matt. One of us is right and the other is wrong. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for finally admitting That's that I was so right. Great. I admit it. Uh, okay, fine. Whatever you your preference is on right. that, you prefer the second half, and I preferred the first half. I don't know if I prefer the second half. I think I, oh. I just prefer it as one long movie. That's what I prefer. You like them both. You like both of the movies. Yes. The both both of, the, of the two movies. I like, you saw, the, you like, I like the adaptation of the book into this That's one six-hour movie. That's what I like. And this you is like spoilers, right? We could talk yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been out. Yeah, it's been out. You know what I, I really liked? I, I, I like that, not to jump all over the place with it, man, but Paul was like, I'm not going south. If I right. go south. Shit's going down. Shit is going down. I seen it. Don't. I'm not doing it. And, I, and he was holding, and he, you know, he wasn't dealing with the pure pressure. And then when he's, and then, listen, when he decided, and not, first of all, good thing he decided to. Because, what's his name? Who was amazing in the movie? Uh, Stilgar? Uh, Fade? Stayed? What's oh, yes. Name? Yeah, yeah. Austin Butler. Austin Butler. But what's his name in the movie? Fade? Fade. Fade. Yeah. Fade. I don't know. Fade yeah, Rotha, Fade. right? Yeah. Fade Rotha. Fade. He showed up there. He showed up in the north and fucking right, the, right. That, yeah. He showed up exactly where um, uh, Paul would have been, right? If he right. Didn't go south. And they would have had to have that scrap then and there, and who knows what would have happened because well, he would because I mean, he wouldn't have had the worm piss in him. A hundred percent. Yeah. So I mean, that's funny how they, I, I didn't really think about that until I, you know, well, I seen the movie twice, by the way. Well, but it's like that <laughs> moment, Roxy. You know, it's like that moment in 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 Endgame. You know, when uh, when or Infinity War, rather, when when Doctor Strange is sitting there and he's like, "Well, I saw all these different possibilities, yeah. and there's only one where we come up on top." And that's and that's like the same thing. It's like he had all these different visions. Paul did, but it's only this one. But you, but you still like this one a lot. You just prefer the first. first yeah, half. yeah. I think that I think that this movie, the second movie, might even be better than the first movie. I just prefer the first movie because the second movie, Paul becomes intolerably annoying to me. And uh, on purpose and should. And that's what the point of the right. character is. You just but, don't um, like where this is. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, my God, you little twat. Right. Like, he's just so frustrating. And uh, he, I think that Timothy Chalamet is doing an excellent job. Yeah. And it's working. And I think that he, I want to punch him in the face. Did you see pictures of him as Bob Dylan? No. Oh, they already have pictures of him as Bob Dylan. It, it looks pretty. He, this kid What's is. What's he a, sound like, though, Christian? A jam and damn and him is out of way to bay and a fiend's out of way to bay him. Hey, did you ever see, not to get switched gears, but it has to do with Timothy uh, yes. Wonka? Chalamet. Uh, did you ever see Hostels? No, what's that? Which, oh, my. What's hey, it called? Dude. Hostels? You never saw that? And you're not. And you're a fan of, um, what's his name? Uh, Christopher Nolan's Batman. What's his name? Which one? Oh, Christian, Christian Bale. Bale. Christian Bale. Host oh, I Christian? did see that. I did see that. Yes, I have seen the, the Western. The Western, right? Is, not only is it, yes. it's both disturbing, yes, yes, but yes, yes. it's a phenomenal movie. I forgot oh. that he was even in that. Did you guys see Beautiful Boy? That's on Hostiles. Uh, hold on, oh. beautiful boy. Yeah. Roxy, did you, Roxy, did you see Hostiles? Hostiles. I did see Hostiles. That no, was West Studio, I, Jesse Plemons. I saw it when it came no, out. Good. Yeah, I and didn't see this. Then bring up Beautiful Boy. I want to hear about that. that. It's just when I fell in love with Timothy Chalamet as an actor. I thought he was oh. so unbelievable. It was uh, Steve Carell uh, he, and Timothy Chalamet pl plays boy? the drug okay. addict. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It so that, really, wow. It's so funny really when you good. say... When and that was based off that book. When you, when you say that, and both you guys bring up both of those movies... If if there was like a trivia contest and you asked me, um, but you his actually saw both of them. I've saw both of those movies, <laughs> and I a would had, take me a second to recollect that I saw both of them, and b um, that Timothy Chalamet was in them. You remember how great he was? He was that? great. Yeah, he I was forget excellent. that he was because he's a, he's well, a fantastic actor, and, and the other one. In fairness, though, he was in the other movie not too long. <laughs> the one I just brought up. Well, sure, but he's still in it. What a yeah. great movie, though. It yeah. just made me think of the movie. Little what Women. Year is Hostels? 2017. Wow, no, I've never heard of that completely. As you just pulled up the cast, yeah. that, no recollection. I of saw that. it because it was during the. Um, it was brutal. it was brutal, and it was a and that was like one of the, it's the a first brutal year. Western? Yeah, it's like the first <laughs> year that I was um, in the BFCA, and I think I started getting screeners, and that was one of the screeners I was waiting for, and I got it. So when he said that, I was like, yeah, 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 that's right. It is, it's, a tough, it's a tough watch, but it's a good movie. Um, okay, so you know, speaking of Dune, speaking of sci-fi, yeah. now everybody was talking about, a uh, sci-fi fantasy, rather, too. Everybody was talking about how Star Wars was inspired by Dune. We talked about it on this show, and you can yeah. see it when you're watching Dune, Dune 2. 
I feel, and I said this the other day when I was at, we both went to went to Steph's wedding, and we were there, and, and you I, talked about it on the show. That no, this is the first time I'm talking about it on the show. Oh. But the only the only reason I because uh, I only reason I talked about it at all is because I saw you post pictures from it. Because I saw Kate post pictures from it, and saw Mark <laughs> post pictures well, Steph, from it. Yeah. Steph responded to my to, so I figured it was okay, but I'm not going to go into the, the wedding itself. But I just did, I had a conversation at the wedding, and I was just like, yeah, I'm just. I'm more excited about the Dune series. I'm more excited about the fact they're going to do Dune Messiah than I am any of the stuff they're doing with Star Wars right now because I just feel like there's a clear vision uh, with Dune. And granted, less stuff, right? That One series, another movie that'll probably come out in three or four years from now. Well, we're at the beginning of it. Right. We're at the beginning of it. So it's unfair to Star Wars, obviously, but they just I just feel like it's kind of a lack of vision. And when you look at this, it's trail- not really unfair though, Christian, because five, six, seven years deep into uh, Marvel, well, you yeah. would have been like stoked. That's true. So it, it, I think that they kind of did this to themselves. I don't think it's unfair what you're saying. Yeah, it's just I'm just not I'm just not excited about it. And so the Acolyte trailer comes out, and this was a series that I've been looking forward to for a very long time because we're going outside of the realm of the. Skywalker era, and we're going away from the prequels. You know, it says a hundred years before the prequels. So the idea when the Jedi are flourishing, and that the and what they what they pitched this thing on for a while was that the Sith were going to be the leads of this show. It doesn't seem like it in the trailer. It just seems like the Jedi are the leads, and when they're in a time when they're flourishing, and then there's kind of a, a dark, mysterious thing happening. The trailer to me, as I was watching it, I think that I like. What I said was, I like the tone. I like the idea that they're taking a serious tone for it. There is very small usage, at least for the volume and and from what they say they're going to do more location stuff. You saw the volume inside the trailer, but hopefully they don't rely on it too much. I love the stuff with Carrie Ann Moss. I'm a Trinity guy, man. So the second I saw Trinity kind of fight and then use the force, I was in. But I said I'm still skeptical because I've been let down. The more and more I think about Ahsoka, the worse it gets. Um, it's the writing. Uh, Obi Wan was a letdown. Ugh. Boba Fett was a letdown. Andor was the only one that I feel was like the real, the, the the truest to an actual television show that felt like thought out and well written. This has the possibility for that. So I think I don't know about the cast. The little kids kind of running around being Jedi and Sith. I don't know. Maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. But I'm skeptical, Roxy. What's yeah, you? you and I had completely different reactions to this. Okay. So for those of you guys who don't know, I am the most, the world's most casual Star mm-hmm. Wars fan. Right. I've seen every live action property, actually, except for Ahsoka, which I never ended okay. up watching. I l- really like Star Wars. I love the OG trilogy. And I've never seen a Star Wars movie that I didn't at least kind of like. I just am a casual, casual Star fan. Wars girl. Okay. So. When I watched this trailer, I came in today thinking, Christian, you were going to be like me. I was like, that trailer was sick. And you were like, it was okay. Uh, it's, it's, <laughs> like, so I'm, just, I'm just skeptical. I, okay, but I thought it was sick because I love lightsabers. That's yeah. what I'm looking yeah, for cool. in my star. I'm the only person I know who thought that Andor was fine. I thought that Andor was totally a fine show. I didn't, I didn't rave about it. I like lightsabers in my Star Wars, sure. and to but you haven't gotten that a lot from a lot of minus like Obi Wan and, and Vader doing some battle. I loved Obi Wan. Oh, you did? Okay. I loved yeah, Obi. I didn't love it. I loved that show. I love Hayden. I, you know, like I'm, I'm very. I yeah. like what I like when it comes Fair. to Star Wars. So I saw this and I was like, number one, this requires me to have zero knowledge. And right. I have no knowledge right. in the Star Wars universe, so I was like, "Cool, New we're era. going, we're going way back." And I love, like, okay, how did this get to be? So even the silly lines that they're saying, as like, um, whatever parts, like, who did this or why yeah. is this happening? And I'm like, "Yeah, totally." Yeah. Like, what is that? When they're looking at the red lightsaber, I'm like, "What is that?" It's just, I was so excited to feel like I'm not gonna have to talk to my Star Wars nerd friends who are like, "Yeah, but actually." You didn't right. remember that what happened with Palpatine in episode seven. And well, and I'm like, I'll give you one. I'll give you one. The problem oh. is, I'll give you one. I'm sorry. And I'll throw it to Matt after this, but I'll give you the only, the one of the things. And let me first, first preface it by saying, I like the tone of it if they stick it. And if they can stick to the landing and they actually make this look the way it feels and gives us kind of like a Game of Thrones and puts that in there and you have characters that you care about. I didn't dislike it. I'm just skeptical. But the one thing that di- I did say, wait a minute, in the prequels, in the first one, uh, I think it's Kaya Mundi who says, okay, 
well, how can it be the Sith? They've been extinct for however long it was, right? Millennia, whatever it was. If all these Jedi know about the Sith presence, what, they didn't log it into the computer? Like, what, what happened? So I don't know. They're going to tell the story. But, Matt, you saw this trailer. What do you think? I I could have. Like, when you look at it, they, they make it somewhat exciting. But I lost all faith in the Disney Star Wars. Not And not because, listen, as far as Star Wars, the original uh, series, uh, the, the original ones, um, the OG series, like you yeah. said. And you like the, the man, you like the Mandalorian, though. I love season one right. of the Mandalorian. Season two. Yeah. Season three fell off a little yeah. bit. Yeah. I don't know why. It kind of upset me that it fell off. I just, it had a lot of cool stuff. But yeah, something, I agree. Something happened there. Yeah, I agree. That we got, it just was the, all of a sudden, no, nobody, the baby Yoda thing, everybody's over. And I don't yeah. know. Yeah. But the first one, I loved it. It was right. gritty. It was right. gr- I loved the first Mandalorian. That's everything I love about Star Wars. Um, lately, it's been just a, a pile of shit. Like, I know that <laughs> Roxy likes Obi-Wan, and yeah. I'm not going That's fine. Everybody's got their own opinions. Right. I thought that, I thought it was shit. I don't care about the sassy uh, Sith. I don't, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Give her our, our own theories. I don't give a shit about it, to be honest. Right. Um, it, what, it, I want to give a shit about Obi-Wan, and why is he such a pussy? Why? There's a, a Jedi, a young Jedi that comes to him. Hey, man, you know, I found you. We got to help out the this and that. No, let's just stay low and uh, let's keep our heads down and just watch, you know, young Luke, whatever he's doing. Next thing you know, that kid is hung in a town square. Right. And, he's, and, and Obi-Wan still didn't find his nuts. They made anyway. Obi-Wan the worst Jedi of all time for a lot of different reasons. That reason you're, you're talking about, but another That's reason. Idiot. But another reason. This guy has had a chance to end the war Five different times. He had a chance to kill Anakin. He let his friend burn to death in the prequels. And then he's got his, his the, the right. He's got his friend dead. He's got this guy dead to rights. Dead to rights. He's just thrown him into showing how powerful he was, yeah. tossed him to the rocks, and he just walks away from him and lets him live. And it's like it's one thing if a TIE fighter comes in and sets them back. It just goes back to the writing of it. It's just Well, let me tell you guys that I don't think you're wrong because I think that the worst thing that Star Wars could do is cater to people like me. They have to hit their core fan base. And right. everything I seem to love seems to be what pisses off <laughs> you, the the core diehard fans. And if you're not doing it for your diehard fans, then you shouldn't be doing it at all. So I'm not saying that I even know what the direction of it should be. And I know usually if I like a show of Star Wars that the, the fans usually, the diehards hate it. So I, I, I think that this could be problematic, that I really like this trailer right. and this is for me. Right. That's probably I, an issue. I, no, no, no. Look, this is the thing that I, that I emphasize about this. If the tone for me, like, is the right way to go, my problem is that I'm just as I'm looking. I wasn't locked into, and this is a small. It's the first trailer, mm-hmm. and I just am skeptical because of everything Matt just said. Right? I'm just skeptical. And I, yeah, go ahead. No, I not to, not to cut you off, but we're talking about how you know it's lately. It's been a mess. Um, Ahsoka, all right? Right. Look, Christian, I kind of blame you because I never watched the cartoon stuff. I never yeah, watched the Rebels. Of, uh, of Rebels. Yeah. You got me into it. So yeah. there's certain episodes that you skip when they got the little kitty one with the little Chewbacca, sure. the little Wookiees. And uh, there's episodes you skip, but other episodes are, are right. really done yeah. well and, yeah. and kind of dark. And I, and I really enjoyed it. They made Ezra, the live action Ezra, the actor, I'm fine with. Yeah. Oh, what the the biggest cook in the universe? I mean, not for anything. The what guy is a the guy is a Jedi. You understand? I mean, the kid is on his way to becoming. You know, he saved everybody from um. What's the blue guy? Uh, Thrawn. From Thrawn. Yeah. And I like the way Thrawn. I like the guy who played Thrawn also. But now all of a sudden, now you got him. You found him. Now they're in a battle. Here, take the lightsaber. Do your thing. Ah, no, I I don't need that. Yeah. I can't look too cool. I'm a dude. I'll leave that for the ladies. I'm just going to use my force and be half a hippie. Really? Really? I get them. Get out of here. Listen, I like strong female characters. Vasquez from Alien. Oh, yeah. Oof, look at her. Sig- Sigourney Weaver. Yep. And Linda Hamilton. Don't make me keep going. I love them all. I got three daughters. I get it. 
you can make the guys cool too. You could do that. Why not? What the hell is the problem? Well, I think again, I think they They're did it well. To I make th- it too much. But I think they did it well in doing women in power, like whoever, like let's. It's their turn now to be. No, how about you make everybody badass? Why not? You well, know? I think they, the one the one thing the way that I thought that they could have done it because when I well when I watched that show. And Which could, one? Ahsoka? Ahsoka. When I watched that show, there was a couple things about that show that, at a few different times, I was like, okay, because it felt as we were just coming off of an Obi-Wan at that point or whatever it was. And I was like, okay, at least the first two episodes, I thought, had that feel to it. And then there was the Anakin episode, which I dug. But then there was a few other episodes. I was like, okay, fine. And then I went back and I watched a few of them again. And you really pay attention to how bad the writing is on that show. The writing is really bad. And like one of the things that what, what Matt was talking about, I definitely had a problem with the lightsaber part with Ezra. But the other thing that I mentioned a million times over was the fact that, um, so the whole thing is that Sabine mm-hmm. is, for some reason they give her the force, which she didn't need to because she had Mandalorian blood and she it was a tough ass Mandalorian and Rebels. But I was like, okay, fine. Eventually she's going to get the force. They're setting this up. And they do. And there's a moment where the stormtrooper has her kind of against the wall and she uses the force and she's able to do it because the whole show she's been trying to and she can't make it work. So she finally does. And I said, okay, that's a great moment. Five minutes later, they're on this big like uh, jump and they need to jump. And Ezra's like, I got to get across. And she's like, I'll throw you. And it's like she just learned how to use the force. And she can throw. And she's like, I'll throw you. As opposed to Ezra, again, to Matt's point, saying, Hey, listen, this whole show is about trust. The whole show the whole, the, is about trust. Her then saying, him saying to her, I saw what you just did. You tuned into it. I trust you. Use your feelings. Make it, make it, you know, use the force and throw me. And she's like, I'm not ready for that. I just picked up this thing two seconds ago. One little change like that. And there's these moments that just were just thrown in there. So I bet I'll, I'll probably like it. I should watch the show. Yeah, I yeah, think so. Maybe. Especially like, look, <laughs> hey. How about this? How long has he been on that planet? And then they got these horse things that they're riding. They're not quite horses. And the turtle people? I don't, yeah, the turtle people. What? Now they got these two horse <laughs> things. Now the two girls, uh, Sabine and who's the other one? It was Ahsoka. Ahsoka, was, yeah. Of course. Now there's only there's, there's two horses. There's three of them. If you're riding a motorcycle, if the guy's on the back straddling you on the back, it's not politically correct to say, but they call that riding bitch. Of course. Who's on the back of the fucking alien horse? Ezra? Yeah, um, take me, ladies. Take care of me. He's a bitch. He's a pussy. So I'm, not, right, I'm not a male chauvinist guy. I'm really not. Right. Hey, first of all, not to, I have ADD. Can I just say, I didn't say congratulations to you, uh, Roxy, <laughs> on that. No, no, because I was going to say Perfect timing. Let's I know, know that. I I'm saving myself now. That <laughs> Lola, that hey, congratulations. Thank That's you. Great. Yeah, I appreciate Lola, it. Yeah, it thank, was you, really thank, good. thank you. Thank you. You know, you. and I don't want to just jump over that. I know it's in the middle of me ranting about Ezra writing bitch, but <laughs> the thing is this: they did that on purpose, Christian. I'm just saying. Yeah. And I'm not that guy. I love everybody. I train my daughters. Right. They're I know you're saying. I know you're saying. Training boys is... on a on a. So that so record. is that is that so that's what potentially is a concern for you with with acolyte is that it is, yeah. Look at the trailer. Is there any dude that you want a young dude's gonna a long, young boy's gonna look up to? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't see, but that's the thing though. For that trailer, I don't think we saw enough in that trailer to know. I just don't think we saw enough. I only know that I'm excited that I can come in with my limited knowledge yeah. and see lightsabers and understand like the initial what happened right. here. That's cool. That is. When I was a kid, and I was, you know what I liked? What I liked what about <laughs> about uh, Empire and about hands? How about Han Solo in general? Mm-hmm. You, dude, you want a guy who's not a hundred percent fucking good. You want a guy to shoot Greedo first if he's a right. fucking smuggler trying to get you away from the bad guys, and he's a badass, not giving a shit, who's going out on his on his. Tauntaun to go look for his buddy in the fucking snow. I'll see you in hell. I'm, that's the guy you want him to be telling Princess Leia when she says, I love you. You want him to say, I know. Do you know why? Because it's fucking badass. <laughs> that's why. You well, might not, it might not be what you want. It might be, hey, that dude's a little full of himself. 
But that's fucking. It was a flavor. It was a flavor to a character too, and I think that flavor to the character. Yeah. How about him now? I mean, now they'd have Han Solo not insane, man. You, if that was now, he's get about to go into that fucking carbonite. I love you. No, I love you, Pr- Princess Leia. Well, well remember though, Matt. The one thing I, was- uh, the pushback, the pushback there is that what? originally in Empire, had it not been for Erwin Kirshner, uh, it the original line was "I love you too." Yeah. And thank and, God for Harrison Ford not giving a fuck. Well, yeah, he said it, and then because they tested it at a screening, and Lucas did not like it. And he was like, no, he's got to say, I love you, too. And then he saw that the audience really took to it. And then he was like, fine, leave it in there. Um, it's all right, it's no, a great line. It's, it's a, it is. an amazing he, line. He's an entire, I mean, the lovable scoundrel is an entire right. archetype now that people use based off of straight up Han Solo. Of course, there was lovable scoundrels beforehand, but it makes perfect sense. He's a lot of people's first mm-hmm. crush. You know, a lot of people want to be like him, want to be with him. And it does make sense. That being said, if I ever said I love you to a guy and he looked at me and said, I know, I would kick him in the balls and leave him. <laughs> while, while, it, while he was freezing and carbonate i also would never say it first yeah. i just would you not. just wouldn't do it first all right well I here's what i'm scared christian well i'm gonna tell you what you shouldn't be scared of and what you should do first is you should go and you check out z biotics did you did you do the z biotics before the wedding for the wedding yes you didn't give it to me yes i did did you yes then before no. you left then no, no but no. I, I can tell you something though what steph i swear to you told me that she took it before her own wedding Oh, maybe I give it a Steph. She took the the Z-Biotics. Lipid- yes. Oh, okay. Maybe I give it a Steph. All right. So Zbiotics. Well, this is great. I should talk to Steph about it. So let me tell you about the both both about Zbiotics and Vessi footwear. Here you go. The other thing you want to check out is Zbiotics and Zbiotics. Thank God I went to a wedding last night, and Zbiotics is the reason that I am able to be here with you today. Um, they are the maker of the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. You got to take your first drink of the night for a better tomorrow. Fact. It's engineered by a team of microbiologists, and Zbiotics is a pro- probiotic drink that breaks down the byproduct of alcohol, which is responsible for rough mornings after drinking. So you have a Zbiotic for the best results. You take your first drink of the night before you do anything else. You pace yourself, you hydrate, and you get a good night's sleep. And then you wake up feeling refreshed and ready to take on the day. I love it. It is game changer. I'm not young enough to be able to just do what I did when I was younger. Don't do it anymore. I take Zbiotic. I'm feeling good today. And every time I have a Zbiotic before drinks, I notice a difference the next day. Even a night out, I can confidently plan on it and doing shows. I'm moving. So I gave Zbiotics a try when they first came to the show. I drank it uh, last night before this wedding, and I'm telling you, I'm top of my game right now. You wouldn't even be able to tell. Uh, that I was drinking last night. So this year, I'm going to form a more sustainable and better me podcasting, doing all this stuff. This is not a all or nothing approach. So you got to go to zbiotics.com slash big thing and use that code big thing. You check out for 15% off. And thank you to Zbiotics for sponsoring this episode and for all the good times. Vessi. So, John, I got these. I got these new shoes. Um, and they have like, it's like rain wear. It's really, really, it's incredible. I love, they sent it to me a while ago, but I'm so excited to tell them about them. Like the, for us, we, I want to tell you that Bessie has like this innovative, it's like footwear and it's designed for spring weather. Um, it's great. So Stormburst Vessies are the ones that I really want to kind of emphasize. And they're your go-to for every setting, city streets to outdoor adventures, enhancing your style and activity with ease. So you can, whether it's snowy trails, wet streets, morning dew walk. So whether you're facing unexpected snow or slippery paths, it's so crucial in general to have these. Like I've, I'm planning a move. I've talked about this, but it's been raining a lot in LA and I've been wearing my vesties everywhere. And I have, and you guys seen it. I've been wearing the one, the, the, the one hoodie that I had that they sent me. I love it. It's one of my favorite things. I love these hoodies. I've worn it on in, in so many different um, videos. They have all weather, all occasion footwear from beach days to snowy communities. They have so many different things. You should elevate your spring wardrobe. You travel with Vessi's Stormburst shoes. You can discover more at Vessi.com slash big thing. Get your pair today and get an automatic 15% off your first purchase at checkout and be ready to step out into style. It is great stuff. 
I love Vessi. I really, really enjoy Vessi. All right. Thank you to our friends over at Zbiotics and Vessi. I love the Vessis. I love, love, love the Vessi. I wear them every day. I got the gray ones. I got the black ones. I got ones I'm taking to New York with me. So uh, please check it out. I put the comment, I put it, the pin comment is always the sponsors, and I always put it in the description. Okay. Let's move on now to this one. Uh, you know, actually, before we get to the Furiosa trailer, the other thing that popped up was this story. Aaron Taylor Johnson is heavily rumored, and it looks like he's been offered the role of James Bond. Um, he was from Bullet Train? Was he from yeah, Bullet Train? Yeah, Bullet Train, Kick-Ass. I uh, interviewed him for Collider Alive. Was he on? Was, yeah. was that after me? I did an hour sit-down with him. Was that before? Oh, an hour sit-down? Was that before, That was after I was... Yeah, it was him and um, the director of Fifty Shades. Remember they were da- the two of them were together? Oh, okay. Um, they, he was awesome. I'm pretty sure I didn't make this up. I feel like that so might internet, be Internet, let me know. Google okay. it. I'm yeah, we'll sure. see. Well, I'm pretty sure he was a doll. Well, Alan, Alan, I don't know who Alan is, but Aaron Taylor Johnson has a formal 007 offer. This is from Dark Horizons. There's a new report in a British tabloid, The Sun, that says that kick-ass and bullet train actor Aaron Taylor Johnson has received a formal offer to take on the role of James Bond. The BBC reportedly approached both the actor's reps and Eon for comment with a production... Sorry. The BBC reportedly approached both the actors' reps for a comment with a production insider telling them that there's no truth in the rumors. Now, Taylor Johnson has long been rumored for the part in the past year, especially in the U.K. press. However, producers Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson have made it clear on numerous occasions that the film is still years away from happening, with Broccoli quoted as saying just a few weeks back, there's nothing I can tell you about the next Bond film. There's nothing. Nothing is happening yet. Taylor Johnson, meanwhile has said that being considered for the part is a great compliment. He is the right age range that producers have indicated they're looking for this for the next 007 film. I believe he's 32. However, whomever, who, whomever takes the job will replace Daniel Craig, who left in 2021. I love this casting. I absolutely love this casting. I think that this is, to me, a great way to keep this character going for another 10 to 15 years. I think he's got the personality. I think he has the charisma. I think that he is perfect for the role. Um, I hope that Craven the Hunter doesn't taint this potential casting because I feel that movie's going to be a turd on wheels. Um, <laughs> but maybe... Do you really? Oh, come hey, on. I man. never saw Matt... Not to get, speaking of turds, I never saw Madam Web. Was that really bad? And you better because you, got, you, you, keep, you keep a couple years of your life for not seeing that movie. Come on, it's that bad. It's I mean it's look, it's it's not the worst movie in the world and it's watchable, but it's not good. It's a bad movie and it just shows it that Sony weird. doesn't it's bad. It's a bad movie. It's and you you feel the same way. Yeah. It's just not good. Yep, um yep. yeah, it's just not good. But I did just look up and I didn't have a fever dream. I did interview him. Okay. On I felt like, yeah, I thought that uh, was, I was accurate. Like, okay, that was Yeah, okay, I do remember. And you know what? Here's what I remember about him you just so him people know. I remember he got there um early, stayed after, talked to every single person, so did the director Sam at the time. She was great too. I remember th- being really impressed impressed by him and thinking he was really, really uh, a great interview, kind, sweet. So I love when uh, nice people book win. big things. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, but you don't know if the TV booked it. Can, the, the, the the reps say no. Um, I hope it's a yes. Well, we'll, we'll see. Uh, I hope it's a yes. So, yeah, do you think he's right for the role? You want to know what's a really, like, crazy thing about this conversation that you and I have never spoken about? Yeah. I have never seen James Hunt. I, oh no, we've talked about. Oh, this. okay, we've yeah, talked we've about. about you never. You, but the, pro, the I one time, yeah. my ex got me to watch Goldeneye. It's the only because I played okay. the video game growing right, up. Right, I right, love right. Goldeneye, okay. and I, it's the one James Bond movie I've seen. So I don't know anything about James Bond. I couldn't even begin to tell you. Uh, all I used to say was, if, if they cast Idris Elba, then I'll start watching. Oh, but but now you might because Aaron Taylor. Yeah, I liked him so probably. Uh, I, I haven't. This I don't. I, Matt, I don't think I've spoken to you about. Bond. Are you a Bond guy? Um, am I a Bond guy? Not so much. What? I mean, you? I, I don't I don't hate it. If there's a good Bond movie, I'll watch it. But I haven't watched one in a while, to be honest. Okay. I, when's the last time I watched one? Like, maybe Casino Royale? Okay. But what about that whole, like, <laughs> men to look up to speech? I feel like the martini, shaken, not stirred, like, no. suave suit guy. No? Well, no, no. He, he, it's, oh, listen, he's cool, but I'm just saying... The movies itself. I'm telling you more about 
lately them just shitting on dudes. Oh. And, but with those other things I mentioned in Disney, you know what I mean? Um, as far as, you know, James Bond, you know, shaking, not stirred. It just never was my big thing. As a kid, you know, I used to watch, like, what's his name? Uh, not Sean, uh, Roger Moore. And he was, like, goofy about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was more of an Indiana Jones guy as a kid. You okay. Know? Not that you had to be one or the other, but I don't know. So James Bond, you know, I, I'm not, it's nothing I'm really, no, so you, you, you know, yeah, clapping you, him so you don't, you, so, so if he gets cast, it's like, okay, let's see how he does. Oh, no, I think he'd be great. Yeah. I, I, that, if that's what you're asking me. Yeah. You know, but Roxy's confused why I'm not a huger, you know, Bond fan. I'm not confused, yeah. but James I get Bond it. Fan. Well, you don't make me sound like I'm one of those. Male chauvinist fucking. I only. I'm not like that. I don't think that at all. You just no. I know. But when you 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 you're surprised. I'm not into James Bond. It's kind of a slow burn. Those movies. Like there's action in them, but I don't. know. I guess I don't know because I haven't seen them. The only reason I thought that is because like he, I feel like is like the guy's guy for a lot of people. Like a lot of my girlfriends haven't seen James Bond movies because he is. Uh, I've heard from like people that the old school the old, ones, the, the Sean Connery the, ones, yeah, the, but even the more recent ones, like there's not that crazy, um, like badass women roles usually. So. Well, the most recent ones oh, have been do? more. Most re- recent yeah. ones there's been more for sure. Like even, um, I feel like, uh, oh, who is it? I'm trying to, remember. I mean, there's there's a ton. No, I just can't remember all the actresses that played them in the last. Like in the Daniel Craig ones, you got, you definitely got more. For sure. Like, if you went through the, the cast itself. You I'm think just, I would like Bond the Daniel Craig ones? The, I think you'd like the Daniel Craig ones. I don't think you'd like the Sean Connery ones. Hmm. No. Um, but I do think you'll like. I like spy movies. Yeah. And I like, uh, yeah, like I love John Wick. And I love. Yeah. You, you'll like. you. Well, the I would tell you that. the first, Did you like the Bourne movies? I love the Bourne movies. So the first few Daniel Craig movies were kind of almost shaped more like Bourne than they were Bond movies traditionally. And then it kind of eases into the traditional James Bond is like he like gets there, mm. um, but anyway, so that's a traditional character. Another another character that has been big in pop culture for a while is um, is Mad Max. Now Mad Max, oh. Furiosa, man, Furiosa. You talk about badass women, it's Furiosa, and you got Annie Tyler Joy, who is taking over for Charlize Theron now. I just watched his trailer today. Roxy, you've seen Mad Max, the one with Tom Hardy. Yeah, of course. And what did you think of this trailer? I liked the first trailer that dropped okay. a lot. Okay. I feel like it did a little bit of show, don't tell. Right. It was kind of vague. It just got me enough to get excited. And to be honest, if we weren't talking about it on the show today, I probably wouldn't have watched this trailer because I've seen enough, and I don't think I want to see any more. Okay. I, I'm stoked. I love Charlize's performances mm-hmm. and everything. But, uh, my favorite performance of all time is her as Eileen in Monster. I think Charlize is, like, the number one actress sure. ever. So Anya Taylor-Joy, who I think is a stud, has a lot to live up to. And I just, I I am excited, I'm nervous, and I don't want to see anything else. Right. Matt, what'd you think? When I was rambling before about the old school bad bitches, I'm telling you, I love Mad Max. Yeah. Because the, the one with Tom Hardy. Yeah. Because both Mad Max and, um, how sure. do you pronounce it? Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron. She was phenomenal in that movie. Yeah, she was. And who was more badass? I don't know, man. And right. I like it. I like that. And it I wasn't. Know. And it wasn't forced. It was not forced. It did not feel forced. And you believe that she was badass. Right. You did. Yeah. Oh, she, that was. First of all, I watched that again recently. I thought that movie was just. I, I can't tell you enough how much I enjoyed that movie. Who's the? I saw this new trailer, and I thought it was great. Yeah, me too. I don't. Who the actress? Who is that actress? So Anya, she's in Dune too. She is in Dune. For yeah, one she, yeah, brief second. She, well, yeah, but she's in it. She's the sister. She's the sister in yeah. the future. Yeah. Well, I don't... She looked great in this. Yeah, she's been in a lot this of it. This looks great. Yeah. I think Thor's in it, isn't it? Um, oh, yeah. He's the Chris main Hemsworth. bad guy. Yeah. yeah, he's the main bad guy. I I'm, I like it. I'm surprised I like it. I, is the, Who's directing it? It's not... Yeah, it's George okay. Miller. Well, then there you go. Right. I'm, you have all my money. Right. Let it rain, George. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah. I'm ready to go into there. 
full tilt. I think that looks. I think it looks great, man. Yeah, me I too. can't wait for that one. It's me too. Annihilate. I think it has everybody's money. I think this movie is going to make so much money. I think it's going to make a lot. I don't. I yeah. mean, it's the same thing that people. Like, as I, the same conversation I had about Dune, and people are like, oh, it's going to make a billion dollars. It. It's not. It's like throwing that dart at the billion dollars is not as easy as you think it is. Mm-hmm. And Dune 2 will not hit a billion, which I never thought it would, but it'll hit 600, 700, which is a massive accomplishment. What's it actually on target to hit right now? Well, right now it's at five, it just crossed a little over 500. So I think by the time, because you're going to have Kong and Godzilla, you're going to have the, the, the April and May movies start to chip at it. I think it ends in the 700 range. I hope so. Yeah. I have a few friends who have seen it three times now. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So <laughs> I see it. Yeah. I, you know what it was? My, last week, my, uh, my family went out of town to Texas. Uh, so I, when you have a routine, and you know this, Christian, you know, with the family and kids, yeah. when you don't have that routine, you don't know what to, you don't know what to do with yourself. Right. So what did I do? The first thing I did was I'm like, ah, I'm going to go see a screening of Dune again by myself. Yeah. I would have done the same. I, I would have done the same. It's so good. Hey, what about when they go to Jedi Prime, the Harkonnens homeworld? I thought when I saw that scene of him fighting in an arena, uh, a fade, uh, Robert, yeah. you know, I thought that was maybe a flashback scene. That's why it's in black and white. Meanwhile, you find out they have like a black sun. Yeah. They ruin their planet yeah. with all the industrial stuff. It's just, it's just so cool. And what a sick effort where. He's checking out the blades, and he has his little, like, assistant, like, women that he just slights their throat. He has his little freaky girlfriends that he's hanging out with. They're all liking that he's killing them because they're going to be eating them. They're like cannibals. Yeah. Dude, this is it's this It's is terrifying. Just, it's terrifying. Boom. Yeah, but it's— I mean, you used to get scared as a kid when Darth Vader would come in a room, yeah. and you— Oh, this guy's going to say something he doesn't like, and he starts doing the old— And the guy's like, ah! You're like, yo, that's horrifying. Yo, he's straight— Yo— He's straight. He's shanking people. Yeah, no, he is. He is. He's he is, crazy. He's an absolute. He's an maniac. Wild. He's in a, uh, this yeah. is such a uh, sidetrack, but I am so curious. Matt. I've just been thinking about this for the last ten minutes. So, you, I, with no agenda at all, what did you think of the Barbie movie? I am sad to say I did not see the Barbie movie. Okay. <laughs> I, and I know my, my family loves it, though. You got to see it. I am so curious your thoughts on the Barbie movie. I'll watch it for sure. I'll watch it with my family. They, they, they love it. They've seen it in the theater and they've seen it at home. I've only seen bits and pieces, but it looked fun. I don't do know. You, I don't... Do you watch the Oscars? No. No. <laughs> no. I don't believe I, These yeah. press, these. Prissy people, I, can't. I can barely get Christian to watch. The I know. Oscars. I, I I just I this this year was the first one I've enjoyed in probably ten to fifteen years. But it was I thought it was actually handled pretty well this year. But um, all right, we did it, guys. We have we covered a lot here today. We had um, <laughs> we got Dune, we got the Acolyte, we got uh, the new James Bond. There's so much that we covered yes. today, and I want to start. With Roxy Stryer. Roxy, where can the people find you? Everywhere at Roxy Stryer. If you're not already caught up on Shogun, please watch so I can talk about it next week. Christian, last night's episode, I was screaming. I'm watching it by myself in my room, screaming top of my lungs. We have to talk about it next week. Okay. The people have to watch it. Catch up. All right. So I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to try to watch at least two or three episodes. If you're not watching my Shogun, you yeah. have to watch yeah, this I, on Hulu. It's the best I, show on TV. My myself and my wife were we still getting through the list. We're getting through um, the Kevin Costner, uh, um, uh, Yellowstone. Yes, yeah. so good. So I like it too. But sometimes they go a little too deep into the the rodeo stuff. Yeah, you're gonna like this that. better. You're and gonna like this better. Like, All right, let me forward. They're just doing this for the you know. This seems more it. your style of Shogun stuff. But uh, I love Jack. I love Reacher. Reacher's great. Yeah, Reacher's good. But I, I and Reacher's another one. Yeah. Where everybody is badass. He's a badass. How about the girls in yeah, that she's show? She's great. That yeah, badass. Yeah. Again, not forced. Very good show. Um, I that Shogun. I need to watch a new show with my wife. Shogun. I don't, apparently like, is I don't like that. Who I don't like that Hulu has commercials. Yeah. Well, I you think you can get it. I no, think... yeah. The upgrade. Spend a couple bucks I think more. I'm gonna have to upgrade. Yeah, upgrade. Yeah. Get that upgrade because uh, it's All awesome. Right. But everywhere at Roxy Stryer, I'm, I'm, I'll talk to you more about it next week, Christian, for sure. Okay, and Matt, so you're uh, you're hosting your show with Jim. Where can they find that? Uh, anywhere you find your podcast, it's UFC Unfiltered with myself and the great Jim Norton. You know. Besides that, I'm just spreading jujitsu love here on Long Island, and that's it. I'll be on uh, I'll be on the Joe Rogan Experience again April 3rd. I don't okay. know when it comes out, but. But you, uh, so that's you recording it on the April third. Yeah, we do like a little, like like a little. We talk about the, you know, he has certain shows that are like 
MMA theme, yeah. you know, like it's uh, an MMA podcast. But we talk about everything. The last time I was on there, I had a blast. Because I'm on there with my buddy Dean Thomas. Yeah. Another one of my buddies, John Rollo. Yeah. I know Joe for over 20 years, so that should be fun. That's great. Yeah, yeah I, I, had a, I had a chance to talk to both Matt and Dean, and I've been a friend, uh, fan of, of Dean for a long time, so it was good to meet him when I, I was on UFC Unfiltered. You can find that episode on, on the channel also. It was a great conversation. So, all right, guys, thank you for joining me. As I mentioned Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere podcasts are found. Hit that button. We're trying to get to 200,000 faster than we got to 100, but we need your help. So be part of the conversation here. Uh, we got a lot of different reactions, reviews. Uh, right now, this is up on Wednesday. My out of the theater reaction for Ghostbusters is probably up. My review of that, the non spoiler, will be up tomorrow. And then I got Kong and Godzilla next week. So there's a lot coming out. There's a lot to do. So be part of the conversation. I want to thank both Matt and Roxy for being here today. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Take care, guys.